All right, hi, I'm Jackson. I'm one of the designers of Mystery Wizard, and in this video I'm gonna show you how to play. So Mystery Wizard is an asymmetrical cap to the flag style strategy game. Uh, can open up the box, we got some rules. This is the game board, two decks of cards. This is a deck of reward items, and this is a deck of quests that you go on to get the rewards. Two mysteries, these are the sort of main game objective. Most of what's in the box is 12 different playable characters. These are all asymmetrical, they have their own abilities. We'll be taking a look at this one in particular in this video. The objective is really simple. Your goal is just to solve two mysteries. These are mysteries. The way you solve a mystery is by bringing it from the tower in the center where it starts out to your village, which will be in one of the corners of the board. When you solve one, it comes back to the center, and you just want to do that twice in order to win. Sounds pretty easy. It, 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 it's actually pretty hard. Everyone is trying to do it at once, and people have different spells that can stop you and hinder you on your way. Alright, so just gonna go over the setup real quick. So you've got the board. These two mystery tokens go in the middle. Each of these decks over here goes on top of one of these. These are just a soft game timer. Lay out three of these quests, and you can lay out their corresponding reward cards. Uh, and now this dual card can go off to the other side. Cool, that is most of what you have to do to set up the game. Next step is just each player picks which of the 12 wizards they're gonna play. For this video, I'm gonna play or pretend to play the sandwich. Uh, don't worry, not all of the names are puns. Okay. So this is what comes in a character bag. These are some of the main things. You've got character sheets. This is like a special character specific thing. So to set up, you just put this token. This is your village. This is where you're trying to get. And you have your character token on it. This is a die to keep track of your health. This is your health that you start with. The way a turn works, you get two actions that you can take during your turn. You have some abilities with you that are called ritual spells that can take up those actions. One action that you can always take, anyone can do it, is walking around, so you can just move one hex on the board. You also have this talent. This just takes one action. The sandwich's talent is she gets to place one of these dunes. These are her sort of main mechanic. They're tokens, you can put them on the board. If other people walk onto them, it takes extra time to move off. This is a passive ability. For her, it just says she her walk isn't slowed down by her own sand dunes. Also, her three Ritual spells, these start out sort of exhausted. You can get them by moving onto these temples. If you move onto there, these become available. She has two burst spells, so these take an action, you can tell because it has this blue icon. This one basically lets her destroy a sand dune that she's standing on to move a couple hexes. Uh, and similarly, this one lets her destroy a sand dune wherever to do some damage to the surrounding spaces. This spell with a red icon is an instant, which means that it doesn't take an action to play. You can either play instance on your turn, on someone else's turn, or whenever someone else casts a spell, you can play this as a reaction. Okay, so I'm, there's no game happening right now. I'm just gonna take a few turns in order to show you like the kinds of things I could do on my turn in a game. Normally, it's pretty common to just walk twice at the start of the game. For my next turn, I'd maybe walk onto this temple. Uh, that gives me access to all of my spells. And then I think I'll place a sand dune using my talent and put it there. Then I could maybe walk into this hex on the sand dune. This is a region, and right now I see that there's a quest happening for right there. Roll a die. There are a few different types of quests. This one is a search quest, so I need to roll a die. If I score high enough, which I did, then I find the item that was in that location. So this gets discarded, a new one comes out. Uh, I get this reward card. This is an instant spell, so it's one that I can play in reaction to other people, and then a new quest reward comes out to match this. For a third turn, since I'm on this sand dune, I want some mysteries. Uh, I'm gonna cast my burst spell. Whenever you cast a spell, it goes on this card called the duel. Normally during this time, my opponents would have a chance to react to it, but since we're skipping them for now, it's just gonna resolve. So this spell destroys the sand dune, but it does let me move twice for one action, so I'm gonna move into the tower. I get the mysteries, because I went in there, this is where you carry them. So now they're like with me, I'm walking around with them, and I'm trying to get back to my village to solve them. So I'm gonna move here with the second uh, movement that that spell gave me, but I think I do want my spell back, so I'll walk into this temple, and that refreshes the spell. Okay, so we fast-forwarded a lot of turns. I am about to win. I've scored and solved one mystery already, and I have another one on me. The problem is, my friend is also about to win. Uh, he is playing this character, Diana the Sharpshooter. She's sort of a long-range combat character. But now I have a plan to win the game. We both have a big hand of cards. We both have some special equipment that gives us bonuses. These are all from doing the quests over here. I'm gonna try to win, and we'll see how it goes. First thing I'm gonna do 
with my three actions, uh, I'm going to walk over to this temple using this equip, which lets me move from temple to temple. Second action, I'm going to walk onto the sand dune. When I walk onto this temple, this uh, my last spell refreshes. My plan is to use this sand surf spell again. We saw this earlier, it's the spell that moves me when I'm on a sand dune. Only, a part we didn't see earlier is that I can actually chain it if I'm close enough to the next sand dune. So if I land on another one, I get to move again. So I've set this up so that if I get to cast this spell, I will move all the way to my village and win the game. So I'll cast my sand surf spell. But now that I've cast that, my friend has a chance to respond. So do you want to do anything? Huh, okay, so my friend has played this portable pinhole spell, which is going to let him take the mysteries off of me and move them two spaces away. Uh, that would mean that when my spell resolves, I'm going to surf back home, but I don't have the mysteries anymore, so that won't be any good. I don't have a response to that that will stop it, but I do have this card, which is going to let me take the card under it when it resolves. So even though this will happen, it'll, it's a useful card, and I'll be able to get it after it resolves. Do you have anything to say about that? He doesn't. So, this resolves, uh, I get this spell, um, but it does resolve, and the mysteries move off of me. Uh, he's gonna move them over here, and then my spell will resolve anyway, but I do get to change my mind. I was gonna go all the way here, but now, now that I don't have the mysteries, I'll just destroy this one dune instead of chaining it, and I'll go over here and get them back. Uh, okay, so it's my friend's turn now, and I'm kind of worried, because he's really close to his house. Right now, he's on a sand dune, which is good for me. Uh, if he wants to walk off, it's going to take his entire turn. But I think he has a way around that, probably. Okay, so my friend has played this spell. It lets him move one hex without walking or spending an action, as long as he's in one of these regions on the board. His plan is to move off of the sand dune for free using this spell, and then he'll walk home normally. Uh, I have a counter to that, so I'm going to play this spell Huff. Uh, it lets me knock him back a couple hexes. My plan now is to knock him out of the region so that his spell won't work uh, and he'll be farther away from his house. He doesn't have anything to say in response to that, so I'm actually going to respond to my own spell with this other spell. Uh, this doubles any number in the spell below it, so now I'm threatening to do four knockback to him. He still doesn't have a response, so this duel is going to resolve. Uh, these two are going to come off doing four knockback. I'm going to move him as far away as I can. His spell resolves, but he's not in a region, so he doesn't get to do anything. Remember, that whole interaction with the duel didn't take any of his actions, because it was all instant cards. It looks like he's now used his first action to cast this card, um, which will let him fly to any hex he wants in his current ring around the tower. So right now he's on the outside. Clearly his plan is to fly all the way home. I don't want that, so I'm going to react to it with my last card that I have in hand. This is a card that lets me move the mysteries on the target up to two hexes. So my goal is to move the mysteries from his hex into my home village and win. Uh, do you have a response? Okay, so my friend just played this spell, which basically becomes a copy of the one under it. So his plan now is to move the mysteries off of his own hex toward his village so that when I try to move them, they're not there anymore. I don't have anything to say about that. My hand is empty now. So that resolves. He's gonna move them over here. My spell resolves, but there are no mysteries on the hex that I targeted, so nothing happens. Finally, he gets to pick where he's going to fly with the first spell that he cast. Uh, so he's going to decide to go over here. This resolves. Uh, now he's got one action left. He's going to cast his ritual spell, which lets him move the mysteries from a hex up to three away onto him. And there's nothing I can do to stop that, so that happens. Uh, but now he's out of actions, and he's not home yet. So, he hasn't won. Maybe on my next turn, I can figure out a way to get back home. I... Okay, so he's played another instant spell. Uh, this is an instant spell that gives him another action on his turn. Uh-oh, I can't do anything about it. It resolves, he gets an extra action, and he walks home with the mysteries and wins. Woo! Woo! Alright, yeah, so I hope that gives you an idea for how the game plays. Uh, there's some stuff that we didn't really go into a lot of detail on in this video. There's like a zillion items, a bunch of more quests. There are like cool crises that happen sometimes. There are like neat bosses you get to fight. They give you really good rewards. Ten more wizards. It's like 
600,000 combinations if you play with everyone. The game plays up to six people, so I was just playing a two-player game, but it gets a lot more intense if you play with your friends.